And now, a math lesson. Let's say the Zaxby's chicken finger plate comes with four, five, or six hand-breaded fingers and one side of Zax sauce. Plus, you can try them with Zax sauce, honey mustard, hot honey mustard, tongue torch, teriyaki, wimpy, nuclear, barbecue, ranch, sweet and spicy, and same. How many possible combinations does that make? Carry the two with the remainder... Uh, a lot. Zaxby's chicken finger plate. The sauceabilities are endless. From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up, wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Zaxby's. Now here's Warchant.com's ass on Hunter Vandy and Corey Clark. Hey, 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 hey. Wake up. What's up, everybody? It's Wake Up Warchant, proudly presented by Zaxby's. Indescribably good. General So Chicken, it's a real thing, folks. It's happening all around the country at Zaxby's. Come together, have some Zaxby's, and we'll make your day better. Uh, maybe some Zax sauce, too, just in case. You know, just in case. Warchant.com, your ultimate semblance sports source. Promo code Warchant30. 30, 30 free days of access to the ultimate semblance sports source. Ultimate seminal writer, Corey Clark, better half of this program. He's here. What's up, Corey? I'm living the dream, man. Doing all right. How are you doing? You doing okay? Yeah, man. Pretty, pretty solid. Pretty solid. Just we're gonna try to shoehorn this in during halftime of the NFC Championship game. So uh, we're gonna keep it tight. We're gonna keep it lean. Uh, the the earlier game was a bit of a snoozer. Well, had a little bit, a little bit of drama. There was some drama there, yeah. Especially if you're dating a Cleveland Browns fan. Oh yeah, how'd, how'd she take it? She seemed all right with it. Uh, I think she was happy that they weren't blown out and they had a chance there at the end. I would have liked their coach maybe to not punt. But oh, what are you yeah, going to do? There we go. Corey and his punting. Corey and It's ridiculous. Punting. Like, how about, have some cojones, man. You're how about James Browns? Wins. Yeah, well, well, speaking of cojones, we were going to have Andy Reid on the show, but he, you know, he, he wasn't going to be able to sit down with his uh, abnormally large reproductive organs. <laughs> My gosh. Like Sam, like Sam Cassell. What the? What is that? That guy. Oh, man. Talk about coaching to win. How about Jameis? Jameis. Put him back in the game, coach. Yeah, the Jameis Brady uh, shootout, the the duel that we all expected. Yeah, that was a uh, – I mean, look, I'm going to say this, and I don't say this often. You and I could have both made that throw, and it would have been a touchdown, right? Like, at least – like, I feel like I, I, there's no way I would have overthrown him. Right, right. Like, I can probably only throw it 40 yards um, at the most, and with my shoulder, we're more like 30. He might have had to stop for the ball, but he was still so far ahead of everyone that it was going to be a touchdown. So I feel like you and I both probably make that throw, unless our hands are too sweaty and it slips out of our hands. But, hey, good for yeah, him. Yeah, he got on. he got himself a playoff pass, a playoff yeah. touchdown. Yeah, come on. People are going to be upset. You're trying to diminish Jameis's great work, man. Don't, Sorry. don't do that. Sorry. Don't do that. Well, uh, speaking of great quarterbacking, I don't know. Maybe mm. that's a good segue. We spoke to potentially – the starting quarterback for your Florida State Seminoles for this upcoming 2020 season on Friday, and that's Mackenzie Milton. We also spoke to Jermaine Johnson. Um, it's going to be – I just like Mackenzie because he, he answers questions, man. He's not a robot. It's pretty cool. That's what stood out to me. He was really candid, really open, getting asked the same question – few times over and and not like rolling his eyes or clicking his tongue or anything and uh so for me personally uh taking off the the garnet and gold shirt just my job wise that's going to be pretty cool if he does end up winning this job there there was a a noticeable sense of like gravitas i felt like maturity maybe that's what they call it perhaps Corey. just uh, Mm -hmm. he he seems like he's at ease man i mean i don't know if that if that's anything to do with him feeling he's got this job wrapped up or you know, just liking what he's surrounded by right now. But that's what I got from that uh, 20 minute almost interview we had with him. Just a really comfortable, uh, knows what uh, what he's capable of, and, uh, you know, just, just confidence, it seems like. Yeah, you know, the, the really good players, a lot of them do have uh, the, that quiet confidence where they, you know, they don't boast, they know they're good, um, they'll tolerate questions and humorous. Um, but, uh, I, I do, I, I thought the most, to me, the most important thing of what, the, the most important aspect of what he was talking about, well, there were two things. Number one, being around each other in the locker room, bringing, a, bringing that, he talked about Brandon Moore, um, who was his teammate at Central Florida, and, you know, he, he kind of told Norvell, look, this guy's, this guy's the real deal, he's a really good player, but he's a great locker room guy, 
Um, I do think that's important. I know some people roll their eyes at it. I think it's more than important. Um, but also just the fact that he says he's 90% and that, um, you know, and look, man, how can any of us like put a, put a real figure on it? It's not like there's some machine that right. has you at, Oh, you're at exactly 90%. But, um, the fact that he feels good enough to say that if we were playing on Saturday, I would play, I could be able to play. And we're, what are we eight months away from the Notre Dame game? So again, you got to hope or think that he's at a going to be close to a hundred percent. And the reason that's important, everyone, is my man rushed for over 1,000 yards at Central Florida. Like, he is not a stationary going to sit there and just, you know, he's not Tate Rodemaker. Uh, he's closer to Jordan Travis, and he's not close to Jordan Travis as a runner, but he's closer to Jordan Travis than he is Tate Rodemaker. That is a big part of his game. And if he's uh, if he's close to 100% in that area, then, yeah, man, that's a he, he gives you a little bit of both, right? He's kind of like a Chubba Purdy type athlete. Not as good an athlete as Chubba Purdy probably, but makes some plays with his legs. And that's a big deal. <laughs> that's a really big deal. Look at the Chiefs game, man. They bring that jackrabbit Chad Henney out <laughs> after Mahomes gets hurt, and he basically runs for the game. Third and 15, he basically gets the first down. So I thought that was uh, I thought that was probably the most important thing he said it to me was just his health, um, but then also the stuff about you know the te- the locker room, uh, being a teammate, the the way the quarterbacks have taken him under his under their wing, the way he plans to take them under his wing. Um, I think all that matters. I do wonder if if this staff, if Norvell and Dillingham need him to be what he was in Orlando, because my kind of belief was. They, they they do like a guy like Tate Rodemaker. Like they do like a conventional sort of uh, pocket passer, pro style, quote unquote quarterback. That's kind of what they've dealt with most of the time. They've been uh, running offenses and being head coach of the program. So if McKenzie can't give you what he was in 2017, I just believe they still feel confident enough in his ability to read offenses, make make quick make quick reads, put the ball where it has to go, throw guys open, uh, have the, the, the brave and bold ambition to make tough throws, that even if he's not what he was in Orlando at, at his apex, that he's still better than what they had in that quarterback room and that's still uh, going to be a better outcome for Florida State this season. So it's, it's also, I thought it was interesting when he talked about, you know, I think you asked him the question about how close he is or, how far the journey's been or what could he do a year ago or something? Yeah. yeah. I'm just like, what he's could like you a do? year ago, I couldn't, he couldn't run our jump. Yeah. And then he goes, you know, three months ago I was running scout team. Yeah. And what he said about running the scout team that caught my ear was that, you know, he talked about live bullets and seeing defenses and throwing with anticipation, the kind of stuff you don't really think about a scout team, but because you, a concern, not just about his health is man, when you've gone, when you've gone three years or two and a half years without, being on a football field and seeing a defense and reading a defense, I don't know that it's just easy to pick it right back up. Like that your mind starts working that quickly again. But the fact that he got three months to do it um, in the spring, or sorry, in, as the scout team quarterback for Central Florida, should really help come spring. That he, It's not the first time he's done it in three years. Mm. He's, he just did it three months ago, so his mind is more uh, used to it. I don't know. I think, that, I think that's something that could be important too. Yeah. And, and not to... I don't want to get too hokey on it. I wasn't rolling my eyes, by the way, when you were talking about leadership, Corey. I wasn't. I promise. Good, buddy. I appreciate that. But just I think about that team when things aren't going their way this past season and like in the offensive huddle, like who's the guy that is going to calm everybody down? You know, maybe like Devontae Love Taylor, but I don't know if like a left tackle is the guy that's going to be the, the calming force. Not to say that like Jordan Travis is like incapable of it, but I still think you know he 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 was trying to find his niche in this offense and, and get everything down pad and you know try to get everybody lined up correctly. Like there there needs that sort of you know that that esoteric you know you exude that sort of calmness, the confidence that I was talking about earlier on. And I just think about like yeah, you're at Notre Dame. It's a it's a one possession game in the fourth quarter, and like Mackenzie Milton's in the huddle. You know like hey man, like we got this. Like I just there's I think there's something to be said maybe about that aspect of his game and some of the other things that he might be able to to figure out and adapt and evolve in the in, in the in the likely case that he's not a hundred percent of of what he used to be because it doesn't mean that he he still can't be an absolutely productive quarterback 
uh, if he's you know has to change a little bit of his game up and, and maybe hang tight in the pocket or maybe not be as bold and, and slide after a seven yard gain as opposed to trying to bust it for fifteen. You know. Yeah, he he also talked. I think it was him that talked about it. Uh, maybe it was Jermaine Johnson, but I I it may, well either way, it doesn't really matter. The point is the same. And by the way, Jermaine Johnson was uber impressive. Mm. Uh, that's a guy that to me. Uh, you know, he answered all the right things. He's like, look, I'm all, I'm not just about being an individual. I want the team success. Um, but he did say, like, why do you yeah, leave man, Georgia I, then? I can rush. The, I can rush the passer. Like yeah. that's what I do. I'm on the edge, and they and I get, I get after the quarterback. That's my strength. And he wasn't saying is it a braggart. He was asked by someone what he does well, what he what, describe his game, and he's like, well, you know, I can get after the quarterback pretty good. I'm a, I'm I'm good coming off the edge. Um, but either he or McKenzie Milton were both talking about, they both talked about leadership and one of them said, look, you can, it's not all just being rah, rah though. Like you have to put in the work. They have to see you put in the work. Yeah. Yeah. It can't just be, come on guys, we can do this and get your pom poms out. You have to show by example, like you can do both. Like again, you bring up uh, LaMarcus or somebody like that. That was a guy that was a a rah, rah guy. Sure. Telvin was a rah, rah guy, but they also both busted their butts. Like it, it wasn't just uh, it just wasn't just words. It was actions behind those words. And I feel like with those two guys, the Brandon Moore guy, apparently, uh, maybe all of them, for all we know, these guys they're bringing in are older guys that should all um, they should all be be able to set a standard or or live up to the standard that they want at this program. And guys can follow their lead because look at Devontae Love Taylor, man. You, you know that guy knew what it was to be a college football player when he got here, and that really helped. That whole that helped that whole position group to see a guy like that not only be good but work that hard. Um, so yeah, again, I, I just think that uh, that th- those two guys we already knew what they what what they were going to bring to the team most likely, but uh, just the way they uh, they carried themselves um, was was really impressive. And it's like it's just two grown ups. Mm, yeah, it's just two grown ups, man. That to me, that's what I was like, man. Those that was like talking to two assistant coaches. Um, so that that can only help. Looking to buy a home? Who isn't? First, though, you'll need someone in your corner, so turn to the experience and savvy of Home Financial Group. Home Financial Group offers products for any prospective buyer, whether FHA, VA, conventional, or commercial loan, and hard money for investors looking to generate wealth. Get a hold of Ryan. He's an old 954-358-9247. 954-358-9247. And his team can put together a fully documented pre-approval so you can search with total confidence. NMLS number 1314679, Sunrise, Florida. Jermaine Johnson uh, just looks built differently. Like he's, whatever, he's 6'5", 240. There has to be somebody on this roster that's listed at 6'5", 240 on the Florida State roster. But Jalen I, Goss. I mean, Josh Griffiths is lift, listed at six four two forty five. Yeah, he carries it a little differently, doesn't he? I mean, like, don't get me wrong. Josh Kando and Janaris Robinson would would kill me inside of five seconds, like if we were like an MMA cage. Uh, but like Jermaine Johnson might just I don't know, like plant me out of orbit with like his physical ability if he punched me or something. I think so you could get a, cool. you could get away from Kando and J Rob for a while. Okay. Like you could back up and make a move, keep him at bay for a while with your with your twitchiness. I don't. I don't think you're doing that with Jermaine Johnson. I think when when the bell rings, he's on you before you've had a chance to even make a move. He's he's like uh, lithe. He's just he, he's not. He looks like a he he has the build of just a uh a I don't even want I, like a small forward almost. I mean, he weighs 240 pounds. He's like not Raekwon a small Gray, guy. Like Raekwon Gray almost. You're saying like with Ray, <laughs> sure, Raekwon no, he's Gray a got power forward. He's he's a, he's a power forward, but just a a guy that you can tell can move really well. You can watch the film moves really really quickly, um, and he just the way he carries that weight is is unlike what they've had at that position in a while. Yeah, Derek McClendon's listed at six four two forty four. Yeah, um, again, yeah. different different dudes. It's yeah. So uh, looking at his grades, he he played either you know left or right outside linebacker. So do we just assume when he kind of talks about you know, I get after the, the the passer. I'm better on the edge. To just I don't know, like putting his hand in the dirt, like lining up as a defensive end. Although, shoot, I don't know if they even would let him or make him have to do that. But just as, there's going to be something different about him playing defensive end rather than the outside linebacker responsibility he had to do in Kirby and uh, whatever the DC. No, because I think in Georgia, his his main role. Uh, you know, he was he was 
labeled an outside linebacker, but his main role was rushing the passer. Uh, again, he was second on that team in sacks and played a third of the snaps. I mean, he was a, uh, he was a pass rushing specialist for them. So it wasn't like he had to do a lot of coverage. Um, so, I, you know, I think that's his strength. That's what Florida State will cater to. Um, I'm sure Kane Doe and J-Rob were in coverage a little bit. But for the most part, their job, theoretically, was supposed to get to the quarterback. Set the edge and get to the quarterback as well. So I, I don't think it'll be anything that he's not used to doing. I think he'll be coming off the edge a majority of the time. Whether his hand's in the dirt or they call him an outside linebacker, I think they're just going to have him as a defensive end with his hand in the dirt. But he might stand up on third and nine. You know, what's the difference? Just he's still go, You're still going the same way. Just give me some pressures, man. I just want some pressures. I want some That's balls batted down. Saw a whole bunch of balls getting batted down at the line of scrimmage when guys couldn't get home this weekend in the NFL. Mm -hmm. That'd be kind of yep. cool. Uh, in case folks are wondering, the Marshall vacancy has been filled. They did not hire Adam Fuller. So, uh, again, Adam Fuller still inside track of being your defensive coordinator in 2021. Cool, though, that we were able to talk to those guys. And it sounds like we might be able to – there's going to be a schedule that we're going to maybe get of other players, so we might be able to speak to some of these other newcomers. So that's kind of cool, yeah. though, right, Corey? And also I uh, want to, uh, you know, give a shout-out to my own story on War Chant. Yeah, market um, it. Market it, Corey. Let's market that. Um, well, just I, I, I took a deep dive into the, into the mainly – well, all the numbers – um, the portal numbers, what Florida State lost in the portal, and what they got. And as you guys can probably imagine, it is staggering, the difference. It's, it's just staggering. The difference in yardage, career snaps, uh, touchdowns, everything that they lost compared to what they gained. Um, and then look, I, you, so I, I did the average of the guys that left on the pro football focus grades. And again, we take these with a grain of salt. But overall, the pro football focus grades of the last two years of the guys that left was right around 60. Which is the baseline the, grade, which is just Which, which is just average. straight up as average as you can be. Yeah. The, average, in this, the average PFF grade for the guys coming in over the last two years that they played is right at 70. And these are guys, so a lot of a, guys came from big-time programs, or at least SEC yeah, Exactly right. They're not just lighting up the UTEPs of the world, yeah. which is always my go-to small school. <laughs> Um, but I don't know why. It's weird. I don't know if it's the Fred Rouse, Lauren Sam connection from 15 years ago. All are those you, guys from you, Florida State that went to UTEP. Are you a Packers but, fan? Um, I, 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 the Packers running backs from UTEP. Okay. All right. Um, Aaron, whatever. And so, uh, so the difference between 60 and 70, to put that in perspective, Florida State this entire year, this last year, had four guys grade out at 70 or better on the whole team. One of them was Asante. Uh, I think Jordan Travis was one. I don't have it right in front of me. But that's the difference. Like, t it might not seem like a huge difference, 10 points on average, from a 60 to a 70. But it's a huge difference. It's a difference between Janarius Robinson and Jermaine Johnson, essentially. Um, or, no, it, more than that, uh, Raymond Woody and Jamie Robinson. Like, those are the differences that you're talking about. And it's for eight guys. It's just, again, they, they, have, they have really done a good job of, of making this roster a more like a, a one deserving to play on Saturdays. And, and what they did, what, the only person you could say that you could make the argument, well, LaDamian Webb, and that hurt too. Like, LaDamian Webb was a 78. Yeah. So if I you take like him out of the equation, you're talking about an average of like 56 for the other guys that they left. But the guy they brought in was pretty darn good too, the guy from Auburn. Similar PFF grade, not not as not as good, but similar. But anyway, my point was, the only person they're really gonna miss, I think, and I've said this before, just looking at the numbers, is if Durden turns into nineteen Durden, because yeah. that dude was a seventy six on PFF. He was a all ACC, in my opinion, all ACC caliber lineman, but he wasn't that guy this year. If he somehow reverts back to that guy. That's a that's somebody you're gonna miss. All those other guys, in my opinion, you don't miss. You upgraded at genuinely every position. Yeah, he had 45 pressures in 19. Yeah, he was that's good, right? That's a big right? number. That's, yeah, that's interior, a really big number. As an interior defensive yeah. lineman, 45. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, yeah, and so that's a guy you'll miss if, he, if he's that guy. But all the other guys, you made a big upgrade. Big upgrade. And upgrades are nice. And again, that's how you use the portal. You, you, know, you, you lose guys that you're not sad about losing, and you bring in guys that you're excited about bringing in. That's a good, that's a good trade off. Uh, speaking of the portal, a lot of the bigger names that were kind of on the board, maybe wish list. I don't know how even uh, practical they were for Florida State, but Big Cat Bryant from Auburn uh, went to Tennessee, a pass rusher. 
Although his, his grades are a little bit mixed, but he, he he's he was a one dimensional guy. At least I think a guy like Jermaine Johnson can still at least like set the edge and play the run to a pretty competent degree. Like that was not in Big Cat's game at all. Owen Carney from Illinois, uh, who went to Miami Central High School, who I think uh, people thought maybe Florida State was in the mix with. There may have been some buzz on social media him tweeting at other players that transferred in. He's going to stay at Illinois. Uh, offensive line, they still are going after players. Check out the PRB, Premium Recruiting Board. There's a JUCO guy that they uh, have been in contact with, and then apparently this player, Brian Parrish, from uh, North Texas, although his grades on PFF, uh, not good. He did opt out in 2020, so uh, who knows? Maybe the year off uh, did him some good. Basketball-wise, Corey, you were there on Saturday when the Knowles took down North Carolina shorthanded. Uh, crazy yeah. uh, shorthanded uh, against the Tar Heels. Uh, this team, though, uh, starting to find a little bit, bouncing back kind of nicely after this uh, this extended break they had. They've uh, they're coming out looking, shooting great, shooting great at the line. Uh, pretty yeah. good stuff. Good stuff to yeah, they, uh, they play on Monday night, seven o'clock against Louisville in Louisville. Yeah, they got tonight against Louisville at Louisville, um, which you know we don't know the the health of Scotty Barnes. Um, you know, I, I don't think it's anything that's going to keep him out for an extended period of time, but you have to wonder if he couldn't play on Saturday, would he be able to play two days later? That seems like something maybe Leonard wouldn't do, and he just wanted him to have him ready for next Saturday against Clemson, which is the next game. Um, so, yeah, it's going to, it's, you know, look, it's, it's, it's going to be tough to keep winning without your best player. Um, but still, what they did, I wrote about it, I wrote a column about it, like, you're where busy are this we? weekend, like, Corey. Busy. I know. Busy, hey, man. man, I'm trying. I'm trying to he's do what I can. He's up on Amira. He's he's up on Amira. <laughs> he's cracking the whip. Uh, but I I think that uh, the fact that they beat North Carolina without their best player, and all of us were like, yeah, all right, ho hump, yeah. We, none of us were surprised by that. Really, again, speaks to the speaks to where this program is. Like, imagine six years ago them beating North Carolina. You know, in us being like, not nobody thinks about rushing the court. Not that you could anyway. Right now, there's plexiglass. You might get shot by a sniper if you tried to rush the court. But um, it just it was like, okay, you were favored and you did what you're supposed to do. You beat a team that you're better than. Meanwhile, North Carolina has like six McDonald's All Americans. They have two coming off the bench. Florida State was missing their McDonald's All American. I guess MJ was a McDonald's All American too, yeah. but basically yeah. missing theirs, and it didn't matter. You know, they, and my point was, that's why you do what Leonard's done. That's why you run a program like this, because um, you lose a player like Scotty Barnes. Raquan Evans has enough experience from last year and this year to be like, oh, yeah, all right, here we go. No big deal. Or in Balsa, it's like, okay, well, y'all need me to play a lot this game because they've got a bunch of seven footers. Some games I play nine minutes. This game I'll play 30. Well, no big deal. I, this, I, this is what I do. I've had big moments. All these guys the have, have had big moments for this program, even like Sardar Calhoun and guys like that. Wyatt Wilkes. Malik Osborne finally looked like Malik Osborne again, which was nice. That's a guy that, you know, he's used to winning and he's used to having a role and playing an important role. And it's not like when you lose a guy, like if Duke were to lose one of their guys, and again, I'm not, far be it from me to rip Mike Krzyzewski. He's done all right at this college basketball thing. But if they lose a guy, the dude they put in might be shivering. Like, oh, no. Oh, this is a lot of pressure. Mm. Florida State guys, it's literally like just next man up because they're all used to playing. They play. He plays all of them. And they're used to playing in big moments. And I think that kind of stuff, the way he runs his program, is really um, noticeable. Or uh, it's, it's illuminated when they have a game like that with one of their best players goes out. Or like Leonard said after the game, if somebody gets in foul trouble, if somebody twists an ankle. Like, yeah, MJ Walker did it. <laughs> My man, I love him. He's got – I don't know if you've ever seen clips of Jim Brown when he ran. Like, he'd get tackled and just kind of slowly pick himself up off the ground and limp yeah. back to the huddle and look like he was about to keel over and then go for 70 yards. Well, MJ has to get helped off the court because he lands on somebody's ankle. And you're thinking, oh, man, he might be out for a month. Tap and then he's out Paul for Pierce. Tap yeah, he's out for Paul three – yeah, he's out for three minutes. Yeah, he's out, yeah, Paul Pierce was like in a wheelchair. <laughs> And then comes and plays crunch minutes in the finals, like 15 minutes later. So, but that the time that MJ was out, they they went on 11-3 run. Yeah. So with Barnes in street clothes and MJ Walker out with an ankle, that team is just so used to yeah, like okay, yeah, big deal. We're 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 12 deep. One play losing one player isn't going to hurt us, and they go on an 11-3 run. It's just that's. Uh, I know sometimes the rotations and the and can be maddening a little bit because you're like, okay, does that guy really need to be in there right now? 
But there's always a plan. There's always a reason. A lot of it is to do with he wants his best players fresh in the final five minutes. But it also makes them all feel a part of the team. And if they have to step up, they've been there before and they're not overwhelmed by the moment. So a, a really good win. I thought it was a really good win. And and I don't know that an NBA team's ever shot. I'm sure it's happened. But they're, they went 37 of 38 from the free throw line the last two games. Yeah, man. That's crazy. Come on, MJ. Right? Tight, and that's tighten cool. up, MJ. MJ and it, I like MJ, you busting his chops after the game. That was good stuff, Corey. Well, I could only do that because he's a 92% free throw shooter. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like, right, right. so you can bust his chops about that because he makes, he's the reason he's, you know, he's made 92% of his free throws, but he's the one that misses. And they, they're 37 of 38, uh, 11 of 11 against NC State, and then whatever that is, 26 of 27 against North Carolina. Correct. That's, that's really good. That's ridiculously good. And yeah, they're, a, they're a good shooting team. Um, and, and if they can keep shooting free, I know they're not going to keep shooting free throws like that, but if they become a good free throw shooting team, a decent free throw shooting team, yeah, that's going to help a lot. Cause last year, one of the real drawbacks from last year, one of the real darn it, I wish they could have played is they were a great free throw shooting team in late in games, especially in March, that stuff really matters. And we didn't get to see it, but what are you going to do? I'm not going to bring up old stuff. But yeah, good win. Two good wins for them. A really good win on a, a Saturday against a, a North Carolina team that's got a lot of talent. They're still not there yet, but they got some talent. Maybe let's work on some inbound plays, though. Or maybe have somebody besides Raekwon Evans inbound the ball. A couple, couple, couple close calls, trying to inbound yeah, the ball. Yeah, you just throwing it up to half court. Yeah. yeah, and MJ got one like that, too. MJ got a steal on one of the – North Carolina was doing that, too. Like, you'd think they have all this time to practice. It's not just, well, throw it up to half court and see if our guy can outjump their guy. That doesn't seem like the, the best idea. But, yeah, overall, they uh, um, got almost any shot they wanted um, and did a – yeah, just did a re- really good job. Uh, that's, a, that's a good win for them. you got to stack them up as much as you can. And hopefully Barnes will be back sooner rather than later. I don't think you mentioned Raekwon Gray, though. Raekwon Gray, really good game as well. Don't you – and, and then he's uh, – he, uh, he had 19 points, five assists. He basically he, – he played point guard at the end of the game. Like, he was the guy bringing up – that's a guy that is a program player. Like, I don't know that Raekwon Gray is going to be an NBA player. He doesn't shoot it well enough. He's not in NBA shape. But he is a, a good college player, and he's a program player. Like, he's a guy that you can count on now, like Anthony Polite. Um, Raekwon Gray just does a lot of things, man. And I know he can be a bit maddening, too, when he comes charging in the lane like a bull, and he'll get a charge every now and again and have a bad turnover. But there aren't many 6'9", what would we call him, 280? Yeah. 300, 280? Yeah, 280. Six, nine, 280 guys that can handle the ball like that, that have really quick hands. At the end of the game, he made a, a, a critical in one. He had a block shot on a three-pointer. He had a huge steal. He got tough defensive rebounds. He just, that, that, it was like a Terrence Mann type game. Just doing a little bit of everything. Um, and that, and he's, he's still just a junior. I guess technically he'd be a junior next year. But again, that's the kind of, and again, he's been doing it for years. So he's not overwhelmed by being on the floor late in games. He's done this. He had to step up a little bit more because they had Scotty Barnes out, so he had to handle the ball more. And it was like, yeah, okay, I can do that. I do this in practice all the time. This is what we do. This is Florida State. One of our best players is out. All right, well, we'll I'll, I'll just play a little better. <laughs> Whatever it is, I'll, I'll, I'll adjust my role to fit what we got to do. And uh, he did. Yeah, Raekwon was good. Balsa was really good in the second half. I, and I know, we, I know we'll go. We'll wrap it up here. It's not all, football, all basketball, but – I'm just waiting for Calhoun, man. I am too. I am you too. Know, I was, was going to ask. You get, yeah. I was going to ask, get, or, or is, is, do we need to just wait till next year with him, or do we still hope that he can become I think something he's going to have a game at some point over the next two months. He's going to have a game where he goes for like 30. You know, he, he's I'm only playing it. like – I'm here for he's, it, man. He's only playing like 12 minutes at a time in a game sometimes, but he is by far the best athlete on the team. I mean, when he gets the ball, it looks like everybody else is in. I mean, he just, but he, he's, he's still kind of coming into like college basketball speed. Like it can't be a hundred miles an hour. I got to slow down, speed up. I can't. And, and, and he's just, he's so wound. So I don't want to say wound so tight because that makes it sound like he's nervous. He's just a ball of energy. He is. He's like play. He's on a pogo stick 24 hours yeah. a day. He's just buzzing around. It's crazy. And I just think if he has a game where he, he hits four or five threes and becomes a difference maker, that it's the world is going to open up. Yeah. Because there's a lot there that hasn't been tapped into yet. Um, and, and so I, I just think I, that guy is a guy that I feel like still has a chance to make a really big impact on this team. He's got to be better on defense, but they all do, obviously. But, man, he just his athleticism, 
his jumping ability, his shooting ability. It feel like it's all there to like come together and be like a, a you know, he's an NBA talent. I mean, athletic wise, he is an NBA yeah. talent. So eventually you got to imagine, cause that's what this coaching staff does. They develop. Eventually this guy's going to get developed and it's going to turn into a, there's going to be a game or two where it's like the Sard- Sardar Calhoun show. I just, I feel it coming. All right, good. I was going to say, you know, people talk about player X is like a human cheat code. Like he's like, he's like the glitch. Like he's on a different speed level out there than everybody else. And it just, it, if it could just slow down for him and he just, like you said, knock down some shots, I think, um, you know, then we'll really get to see what uh, he's capable of because they, they, they talked really highly about him this uh, off season and this yeah. is not a, a staff that really hypes up guys and gasses them up for, uh, for no good reason. Uh, on the way out, another player that I forgot to mention, uh, portal wise, that did go other, elsewhere. Wanye Morris, not of boys to men fame, but uh, from Tennessee. Uh, I think he, I don't know where he committed, but he, he's not. He left Tennessee. He's not coming here. I think Oklahoma, Texas A&M, and Southern Cal was where he announced he might be going. Andrew Baselli, who already announced he was going to be transferring, uh, landed in Boca Raton with Willie Taggart. So he'll be at FAU. Okay, getting the band back together. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of getting the band back together, Charlie Strong, Urban Meyer, you're reuniting in Jacksonville. Who's going to have more wins next year, Mike Norvell or Urban Meyer? Mike Norvell. Oh, no, I don't know. No. So they play a lot more games. Um, I still don't. I still don't. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't – I could see – you know, I could see the Jaguars going 6-10. and Um, That's true. That's true. You know what I mean? My my initial gut is Norvell, but I see Norvell around six wins too. So – uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be close. Who has the better quarterback? That's the real question. Ooh, huh? Oh. Who's better, Trevor Lawrence or Mackenzie Milton? We'll see. Don't know yet. I forgot. I mean, I haven't done the countdown. Next show, I'll, I'll, the countdown will begin. I assure you, we'll start counting down the days to the Notre Dame game. It's close by. We're gonna do a live show Tuesday, Corey. You wanna do that? How's that sound? Yeah, yeah. Tuesday. Yep, yep. Let's do it, buddy. All Let's right. do it. Uh, live show as well, probably on Wednesday. I'm guessing probably recruiting chat with Michael Langston since we are approaching closer to that uh, February signing day. Uh, who knows, Destin Hill, Taiwan Malone, are these guys still available for Florida State? I don't know, but I'm sure uh, Michael Langston does, and he will let us know the latest on that. So do say ConnectedWarchant.com. Uh, if we have any updates on player availability, we'll let you know. Also, apparently, Mackenzie Milton is supposed to have a checkup with his uh, doctor in Minnesota on Monday is what he told us on Friday. So if any news of that drops uh, we'll be he sure. said like a final checkup, right? Yeah. Like yeah. basically, uh, we all he thinks anyway, just to get like that final go ahead. Like, yep, you're good to go. Yeah. This has been fun. Go so, get them. If we get news of that, we'll pass along to you folks over on WarChant.com as well. For Corey, I'm Aslan. Thanks for listening to Wake Up WarChant presented by Zaxby's indescribably good. WarChant.com is the ultimate inside source for FSU football and recruiting. And now you can get in on the action for free for an entire month. Warchant.com is offering a risk-free 30-day trial subscription. Get full access to the number one website covering the Seminoles just by entering the promo code WARCHANT30. That's WARCHANT30. Sign up and get in on the world's most active FSU message boards. Receive breaking news, stories from our award-winning staff, plus get exclusive interviews and videos. Just enter the promo code WARCHANT30. Warchant.com, your ultimate Seminole sports source.